I have, uh, I guess Ty called me a month ago and asked if I wanted to do today. And, and immediately the Lord started working in my heart and in my mind and things, I mean, I just, he overhauled me, guys. What do you think in your life is the biggest battle you fight in your Christian walk? What's your battle? Yourself. Yourself? It's not the devil, is it? We got him under our thumb. My biggest battle is over the... And this has been a work going on in me for the last probably year. But I have a... For, for the first 50 years of my life, I was extremely high-strung and performance-based. So it had to be just like my pride thought it should be. That self is your pride. That self is my pride. And as God's been crucifying my pride, I see more and more it's just flat-out sin. It's in His way. It's, it's, and he's not, if you feel like you got the brakes on in your life, it's not God. You got pride in something and you're, you're holding back. When he tells you to do something, do you do it? Or do you have to weigh it out and do the checklist and pray about it and get back to it and then never get it done? Pride. Yeah, Lord, I'll get that and never do it. How does he feel when I do that? What does he think when I'm sitting there saying, uh, I got this. I'm the man of the hour. He says, no, dude. You don't even do what I ask you to do. You're so full of yourself that whenever it's time to do something for me, you want to do it your way. And he said, Shane, that's nothing more than a sacred cow. He says, you worship it, you believe it, and you will not let me drive. You will not let me be a part of your decision, of your direction, of what you're going through. And he says, you're just, you're locking me down. And I thought, God, how does this? He says, do you not realize I can't drive a parked car? If you got the brakes on and God's telling you to do something and you don't do it, you just flat out told him no. You know, and it's always something in our life that comes that it's not easy. But, but it's one of those things that it doesn't take but just a little bit to scratch my pride scab off. I can go to Walmart and somebody can make me mad. People driving down the street. In Dallas, they get out and shoot you because you irritated them. Pride. We're so full of pride. We're so proud we're Christians that the lost don't want none of it. That scares me. That really makes me uh, go deep and look. And it's like, oh God, am I saved? Yeah, you're saved. I'm saved. But until we deal with this pride issue in our life, we will not move forward in the kingdom of God. And you're not going to have what God wants in your life until you bow your head and you say, yes, Lord, the ever answer to this book is yes. If he shows you something and you, do, you, you don't have a vote, that's pride. That's me thinking that, well, I'll do it if I want to or I'll do it in my time or I may not do it at all. And it's like I, I've, I've been struggling with it because I'm trying to weigh it out and I'm trying to let him sift it out. Go with me. Well, I bet we're already there, aren't we, Wayne? Yep. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every thought. 
bringing it into captivity. So many things going on in this world. You know what's the matter with this nation? They're running in pride. They think they can do anything they want and God's got to bless it. Let me give you a secret. He don't either. And if you got things in your life and you're bucking the Lord, you're not going to hurt Him. He will sit there and hold you till you get over yourself. And it's like, Father, I don't want to do that. That's not in my plan. That's not how I... He says, uh, who's driving? Yeah, most of the time it's me. I'm so proud who I am. I'm so proud of what I get to do. I'm so proud when God uses me. You know what? It stinks to Him. It stinks to the high heaven. And, and I struggle with that. And I even struggle bringing this word because I'm kind of exposing my dirty laundry. I'm full of pride. Been there. Little Bear, our little grandson, has been teaching me things. He can poop in his pants and he don't even have to worry about it. Somebody else will fix it. He gets hungry and he goes, ah! And we feed him. He gets his little cart stuck in the chair and he just stands there, ah! We got it from birth. It's a seed in us that we're born with. Now, I don't blame little Bear. He's doing what babies do. He's supposed to. But he's showing me that's where my pride got rooted in me. It's because I think everybody needs to do it my way. And I'm not concerned about God's way. I'm not concerned that uh, I, might, I might be doing this in the flesh. It says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. And that last line, and having in readiness to revenge disobedience when obedience is fulfilled. How much, you know what uh, the Lord's been showing me the last month or so? He says, I don't really care about your smoking, chewing, and going out with the girls that do. He said, them attitudes in your heart are what's keeping you away from me. You got heart issues, and you don't want to ask me about it. You don't want me to cleanse it and help you. You don't want my part of being, uh, you want to do it. Got this, God, I'll call you if I need you. You're going to need him. We all do. I do. And I'm struggling trying to figure out which part is him and which part is me. Because the me part is flesh. It's carnal. And, and when, talk to me. Is that the, the, the Leviathan in Job's pride? Possibly. You know, I haven't studied that or anything. Uh, but it is a controlling spirit. It controls us. And, and people can smell it on you when you walk in, but you don't know you got it. It's about getting still with Father, getting quiet and saying, Lord, what's your will? What do you want me to do? And then doing it. i got some things on my plate, guys. They've been on there a long time. I'll get around to it. You know what around to it is? Usually never. It is with most of us. And so as I, I'm ready to punish the disobedience in my life. And I don't even feel like I'm a, rebe a rebel. But the more I see my heart, the more I got, I got issues. I'm so proud that I, whatever it is. And it's like, oh Lord, We've got to come to a place where we start spotting this and we cleanse it out and we get it out. Go with me to Proverbs 16, verse 18. Proverbs 16, verse 18. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. How many of you are, are, you get frustrated sometimes because people don't do it the way you think it needs to be done? Yeah, it's pride. <laughs> you knew it was, didn't you? It's pride. Well, I just can't believe that, you know? They just, don't, they just don't know what they're doing. And who are you? You're an arrogant, religious, 
sacred cow, cow worshiper because you're not listening to the Holy Spirit. You're not obeying and you're not laying yourself at the foot of the cross and saying, God, burn this out of me. Get this pride out of me. I'm so proud who I am, even if I'm wrong. And I usually am. But I think I got it all together. Now, you all know I don't. But I think I do. Yeah. It's scaring me, guys. We are in the last days. Jesus is coming soon. I do not want to face him in six months and realize, he says, man, you never got over yourself. I, I, I tried to use you. I tried to work in you. I tried to help you. I tried to bless you. And you wouldn't get out of the way because you already know what I'm supposed to do. And I think, oh, Father, what am I up to here? And why am I struggling with this? Verse 18 says, pride goes before destruction. You're, you're sitting here rebuking the devil and it's not even him. It's God saying, I don't like this in your life. I don't like you thinking you're hotsy totsy. You're a nobody in the kingdom of God because that's how we become servants. That's who we are. That's when we have, you know how people can just set you off and make the hair on the back? That's your pride rising up. Nobody should be able to push that button. Nobody should be able to, you don't, you don't know what everybody else needs. You don't even know what you need. And I got struggle with that. I thought, God, what do I need? He said, you need to hush and let me drive. Get in the back seat and shut up. Yes, sir. I don't like it back there because I can't see as good. And I can't give my two cents to everybody. I, I, am, I am the fixer. Y'all just ask me. I got the answer. It's probably not right, but I got one. And we let that old spirit get on us. And we let it. It's been on us, guys, since we were born. I'm proud where I work. I'm proud of my kids. I'm proud of this car. I'm proud of my... Lord... That's the one the pride needs to be grounded in. I need to have it in Jesus and in the Lord's work and in what he wants. You know, if you're not willing to accept the new wine that God wants to offer, he'll let you keep sucking on the old wine. And it's getting kind of old. And the bag's getting kind of holy and it's getting kind of tough. God says, but you won't let the new wine in. Well, what's the new one, Lord? I already thought I was doing that. And he says, no, you don't have a clue. Submitting to, hunt, to Father. Surrender. Not strutting around. I don't need to be popular on this earth. I want it in heaven. I want it where... I watched a, a video last night that really rocked my world. It was a man that has done a lot of studying on people that have passed gone to heaven and come back. And he was drawing out all of the, the comparisons and they were very close. You know, there's people in China, people in Africa, people in America, what, he went all around the world and they were very, very alike. Their, their, their journey, them seeing Jesus, them coming back. And, and so as, as I was watching that, he said, you know, all of them tell me whenever they get to heaven, they don't... How do I say this? When they walk into heaven, the love of God grabs them so big, they don't even know. And, they, and he said, it goes in so deep that you just, you are just, oh. And he said, there's two things God requires when you get to heaven. One is that love, knowing the love of the Father and being obedient to His ways. And number two is how you treat each other. He said, y'all are about relationship. And how you do in a relationship, God's watching. And, and it's like I could go over here and give Joe a donut or a glass of tea or something, you know, and the Lord sees it. 
or I can go off and say, Joe, go get your own. I'm busy. Are we really so hotsy totsy? Are we really? And the devil sends people in to pull our pride trigger every chance he gets. Somebody will say something. Somebody will do something. How dare you? Whatever it is. I got this big challenge coming up to go move mom and do all of these things. And, and mom wants me to run the show. Ah, uh-huh, it's not my show. Lord, what do you want to do? Have you stopped and asked him today, am I even close to being on track, Father? You know, I got my plan and it looks good, sounds good, feels good. He says, I didn't do it. It was a good plan, but it wasn't a God plan. And whenever we're not in a God plan, guys, we're frustrated, we're wounded, we're mean, we're selfish because our pride bubbles up. If the Lord wants to turn the boat, He ought to have that privilege in my life, whatever it is. If He says, Shane, I want you to go home today, I want you to pack your suitcase, and you need to go to Brazil for six months, you know what the answer is supposed to be? It won't be. (laughs) God, no! I don't like it over there. Can I pray about it? Are you sure you... That wasn't for me. That was for Joe. Oh, I can think of a thousand reasons I don't do what he wants me to do. Or that people don't please me the way I think they're supposed to please me. How dare me? You go into a restaurant and those servers, they are there. Your water's on time. Your food is good. Or else you'll throw a fit and get in pride and just rake them over the coals. When you should have doubled the tip and shut up. All of us have this. I'm not even going to let you raise hands. I've lived long enough. I see it everywhere. I'm so proud of who I am. You know what the ultimate is? You need to be proud of whose you am. Who do you belong to? Who are you serving? Guys, we got about 30 minutes on earth compared to eternity. And then we go into the holy. Why is it so hard that I keep demanding my way? I want to do what I want to do and you're going to do it like I want you to do it. You know what? If it's pride, I'm not doing it. I'm not worshiping sacred cows with nobody. i got enough of my own. And I'm tired of it. It's about time to get the gun out and start having some roast. And get those things out, you know. We've got to realize that there are people on the world that will never like us. Because the Spirit of God lives in us and the devil's going to throw rocks at you. They did Jesus. Why wouldn't they do you? People come in over here at the food bank and they got ugly road all over them. We just love them. That's all we can do. And we might might get a seed in their heart that when they get gray hair, they finally grow. Who knows? But, But what I'm trying to say today is do a checkup. If you've got pride in your heart, you're struggling with God. And if you've got pride in your heart, God's struggling with you. And it'll set you free. As you start seeing it and you start letting it go, you start seeing God's blessings unfold over your life. And it's like, uh, you know, I want this new Chevrolet pickup. And God says, oh, I'd rather give you a new big one, fancy one, nice one. I want one that's just good enough. It can be used. I don't care. He says, no, you don't have to do that. I got plenty of money. I'll, I'll help you out. But I ain't in that place. I'm still driving the old one. And and I'm going to be fine with that. But I've got to come to a place with my pride that I realize I only serve one master. Not one person on this earth. I serve one master. Jesus. And Jesus is love. In the story. That's our deal. Let me go to uh, Proverbs 16. Excuse me, Proverbs 8. Guys, it's not a fun sermon. I would really rather get up here and tell you it's going to be whipped cream and roses the rest of your days. But if we don't deal with this pride, it's going to be stickers and thorns. And God will let it flat die if if humility doesn't come in. 
I have to be humble. He don't care what I know. What he cares is who I know. Him. Verse 13 says, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogance are the evil way. And the perverse mouth I hate. That's pretty strong for the Lord to say. I hate a a perverse mouth. Let me give you a little nut. That means talking about others. That means acting like you know all about it and you want them to do it the right way, your way. You know what I've learned over the years? There's about 40 ways to do something in the end in the same result. Oh, but i got to have it this way. This is what I know and believe. Let me tell you something. If you don't believe what this word says, you're wrong. And you better dig out the, the truth because this is the only thing when you get to heaven, God's going to say, you did it. You did that. That verse and chapter. But if you're trying to, I've had people come to me. So, Shane, I don't care what the Bible says. I don't believe it that way. Go to hell because that's where you're going. That's the choice. The Bible says there's one way. And my pride says, but I'm going to get around the back door. He says, you ain't coming in, boy. You better settle down. And I'm struggling with that. I thought I had him all figured out. Guess what? God wants a freshness over this body. God wants a freshness over every one of us in our walk. And and it's like... I'll give you a, a, this is where he started teaching me pride in the simple terms. I would go to a restaurant and I'd order, I'd be starving. So I'd order the $29 plate and I wouldn't leave a bite of it on the table. On the, I ate every bit of it. And about halfway through I heard the Holy Spirit say, you're kind of full, why don't you put that fork down? My pride says, I ain't leaving this here. I just paid for it. That's a poverty spirit. That's thinking you ain't never going to get any more. We see this over here all the time. They just got poverty on them, but they don't know it. All of us have this challenge in our life. And, And I can't seem, Jane can order the small portion. I get the grande every time. And then I got to eat it. And the Lord says, you want to lose weight. You pray for me to help you with your health. You want me, and you won't put your fork down. Uh, but, 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 but God, don't butt me, Shane. Don't butt me. I already know your heart. And, and I have this fear that if I, if I don't eat it, I might not get more later. And I think, well, I'll eat all of this and then I won't have supper. Nah, nah, you always go get supper too. Is, oh, it's just a snack, 42 crackers and a pound of peanut butter. <laughs> you know, it's not good. It's not right. And we have to come to a place, do some checkups. This week, sit down and get with God and say, where am I buying a lie? Where am I off? How am I treating my wife with arrogance and pride? And she just stays quiet and lets me. How am I doing in my home life? How am I doing with my children? All of us are battling with our pride. And when he started bringing that down on me, this is before Ty ever called me. Man, this has been working on me for a long time. You're not as hot as you think you are. I think, oh Lord, I don't want to be hot. I want to be humble. I want to have the protection of the Lord in my life and the direction of the Lord in my life. You know, there's so many things. It's like, well, why do I have to go through this? Probably because I made a mess. Probably because of my pride. Probably because I thought I knew it and I hadn't got a clue of what it is. A perverse mouth God hates. It's, it's, it's strong. You know, and it's, it's just like... How long is it going to... I know God forever. And and Lord coming back in a year or two or whenever He comes back, God says it's about time to ship it up, shape it up. We could call a prayer meeting tonight and four people would come. 
How about I'm busy? And wait, wait till the Cowboys or the, not even the Cowboys, the Cardinals. Whoever, wait till the ball game comes on. Who am I? Who am I? I'll say I'm a Christian when I'm around y'all, but I act like a bozo out there. Are we putting rules on other people that we think they need to do when really and truly I trust them to the Lord? I'm living this with my kids right now. I have to give them to God. I pray for them every day and give them to God. And he'll, he's faithful. He's faithful. And, and all of us need to come to a place where we go in the closet today, tomorrow, and say, God, Where's my pride eating me up? Because it makes you miserable. It just makes you feel like you're... Well, what it does, first of all, it stirs up an anger because it's not working my way. I don't want my way. I've done it so many times, I can tell you right now, I'll do it wrong. And I'll have to go clean up a mess and start fresh. Let God drive. There's a, there's a principle... And I, I can't give you a scripture for it, so this is just in pencil, all right? But I have learned over the years that anything in my life that I'm willing to finally loose to the Lord will set me free. Whether it's my pride, whatever, unforgiveness, it doesn't matter. But whatever I loose to God, it sets me free. I mean, it's, it's the smartest thing you can do. And, and the number one thing in divorce is pride. You know, when everybody gets their army boots on, it's too late to fix it. We've already started firing shots and everybody's wrong. I ain't seen a divorce. Uh, well, I have to, but I'm not going to say that. Matthew 23. Does this make sense to y'all? Because it's sure hard for me to teach. Some of you don't want to talk about it, do you? <laughs> Matthew 23, 11 says, But he who is the greatest among you will be your servant, and whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. God, surrender. Just surrender. I don't care if it's your health. I don't care if it's your finances. I don't care if it's... It doesn't matter what it is. Surrender. If you're not going to get on God's ground and do it God's way, then you can go ahead and take the dirt road and, and take your knots. I'm living proof. But you better know what the Word says, and you better do what the Word says. This is the only hope we got. It's the only thing we have to hold on to. This is the truth. And if you're, not, if you're questioning it or you're bucking it or you're fighting it, you, you might have a problem. You might be in a real ugly place one day and God says, I tried to get to you, but you wouldn't ever listen. And the thing I learned, even like with Little Bear, we learn this early. We, are, we learn it that if, if somebody doesn't cater to me or if somebody's not doing what I think they should or if somebody's not running to get my dirty diaper off of me, then I get critical and judgmental and I get harsh on people. I, get, I struggle with that. I want it to grow in God. I want the Holy Spirit to have freedom to rule and reign over this ministry. Let God drive. It don't need a man. It's got the Lord. But it could sure use some people to get on their knees and find out, hey, if we got pride here, are we, are we excited about what we do and how we are? Are we doing it because of whose we are? Are we doing it because we love the Lord and we have a chance? We're never going to get these kind of people and this many of them in one room ever without a food bank. Do they see Jesus on me? Well, if they do it my way, they do. <laughs> if they don't do it my way, they kind of see the enemy. Or they see flesh is what it is. He who is greatest above you will be your servant. A house full of servants will have the blessing of God like nothing, nothing you can imagine. 
a house of servants, people that serve each other, not people that demand or want you to do it their way. Ain't God. And, and what it basically is is a controlling spirit, just like you're saying. And, and so anybody that, that, why can't we love each other just like they are on the way to where we're going? I can already tell you every one of us have stinky feet. It's okay. Jesus washes feet. Jesus is our wash. He's our God. 1 Peter 5, and I'm going to pull in. 1 Peter 5. Guys, I know this is not fun and it's not easy, but I know it will set us free. I know it's going to set me free. And I am going to make a purpose in my heart the next few months to double check what I'm doing and slow down. One of the fastest ways the enemy can sweep you up is get the busies on you. And the adrenaline high goes to rushing and before you know it, you've done shot off and you've missed it. And you think, well, God, where are you? He said, I'm right over here waiting on you to settle down. Okay. Check your heart. Check your heart and see if maybe there's not something that all of us have a battle with. I can tell you right now, pride is my hardest one. And, and I'm sure there's other internal sins, but they are not. Right now, that's the one God's drilling down on with me. And he says, you need to take a chill pill and let me deliver you from that. 1 Peter 5.5 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to the elders. Yes, all of you, be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time. Humble yourself. I have to do that. And don't you dare pray, God, humble me, please. Your wheels will come off. I guarantee you they will. And it'll be like, oh, what happened? You asked me to humble you. Hot shot. I think, oh, but Lord. He says, don't but Lord me. You, you got the book. It tells you the truth. Humble yourself. Well, I am humble and I'm so proud of it. That don't work. That don't work. Being, being led by the Holy Spirit will help us come to a place where we can get out of our pride where we can get into humility where we can get to a place where we get up in the morning and we say Father send whatever you need to across my path today and I'll be glad to I'll be glad to be there for you and I choose to forgive anybody that might hurt my feelings today I'm not even picking it up because it just scratches my pride Hurt feelings are nothing but pride. It's when somebody betrayed you and you get hurt feelings and then, you're, then you're, you rear up. I do it. I'm telling you all my mail. I promise. This is not, I'm not pointing any fingers. I, yeah, I am at me. But I, but I got to help. I can't go home and not say, guys, if you've got pride, start asking the Lord to expose it. Start asking the Lord to deal with it. Start asking the Lord to bring the blessings to you once your pride is out of the way. Don't you think God knows how to drive? Then get in the back seat and hush. Trust Him. Release it. When I let it go, it sets me free. Whatever it is, even, even I got two daughters I hadn't seen in five years, I let it go. And the Lord sets me free and He says, I know where they're at. I got it. Don't worry about it. Well, I got to go fix it. Well, every time I try to fix it, they get mad at me. And they have good reason. Their pride's wounded. Daddy did it. Verse 6 says, Therefore, humble yourself. You do it under the mighty hand of God. Guys, he is, He's got His hand on us like we've never known before that He may exalt you in due time. You'll be exalted. You will be. 
but you won't be exalted without humility. You want, and what does, what does humility, you want the definition of humility really is to me? Let God drive. Shut up and get out of the way. Let him drive. Let him be God. Man is his biggest problem. We're in his way all the time. And I love him so much. And he says, yeah, but you don't do what I ask you. You don't do what I tell you. You keep, you keep getting over in that fleshy zone. And we know the Bible says to kill it daily. I'm so proud of who I am. I'm so proud y'all let me come up here. But I'm scared spitless what he's going to put me through next week. Because I'll get a taste of it. You watch. I hope it's just one. It may be a month. Who knows? But I don't want pride being... I, I don't want it in me. I don't like that because I'm not, I'm not close to God's heart when I smell like that. I'm being selfish and I'm acting like the devil. And you know the devil got pitched out of heaven because of his pride. And do you know that little rascal had the power to take a third of the angels with him? He's got a pretty good mouthpiece. He jerked out a third of the angels of heaven. They didn't probably have the pride except they had pride in following him. And now what do you think they think? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Verse 7 says to cast all your cares on him for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. See, now that to me, I've always just took that one verse. But it's the next verse right after humility. I can puff you up. I can get you to destroy yourself. And you will. I don't want to go to heaven. And he says, you never did get a clue, did you? What about? I thought I had it all figured out. You better, be, you better be right. I know in my heart that i got some issues. i got some things that I've, I've allowed to breed pride in me. And I don't like it. I don't want it. And I never want to put anything on any of y'all. It's on me. This is where I'm at. This is my mailbox today. And, and it's like... The lion is running around seeking whom he may devour. Two verses up, he says, you better be humble. Do you think the lion's looking for pride that he may devour me? Because if I'm in pride, he can devour me a whole lot easier. He can take me out with just a little punch. I'll take myself out most of the time. Verse 10 says, resist, verse 9 Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same suffering is experienced by the brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. That's what I need. That's what I need. But I don't like that part where it says that you have to suffer. Suffer is killing me on the inside. Suffering is saying, Lord, I don't know, but you do. I really think I have my, my life mapped out. And I'm so lost, I don't even have a clue. I don't know where God wants me or what God wants to do. But my pride has always tried to tell me I had it figured out. And I don't. And, and the further I get down the road, I realize the devil's not pushing against me. God is. God's the one that says, hey, I'm not dealing with that. Okay, well, I guess I'll just live with it. But it says, may the God, in verse 10, may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you've suffered a while, he will perfect you, he will establish you, he will strengthen you and settle you. To Him be the glory and dominion forever. You know what I'm learning? If I see people that are, that are feeling worthless, they don't feel established, they're weak, and they're, they're all over the map, they've been going in their pride. They've been using their pride to direct the ship that God's driving. 
All of us have a, have a characteristic because we're born with it. I'll tell you, four of the things that are the hardest things for me to say, it just, it just nails my pride. Number one, I love you. Number two, I was wrong. I'm sorry. Number three, I need help. I need help. I need y'all to help hold me accountable with my pride. Number four is, I appreciate you. People don't want to say that to, the, to their surroundings. I appreciate you. Because most of us want everybody to appreciate us and who we are. And Jesus says, you're nobody if, that, if you don't have me. You're nobody. And I think, oh, Lord, until you're willing to come to the end of yourself, God can't move and won't move. You have to surrender. Surrender is one of the biggest words I've ever tried to swallow. i got to surrender. Because if I don't, my pride kicks in. And then when my pride kicks in, I'm too late for surrender and the war is on. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Guys, if God had His way, we'd have a hundred more chairs in here and they'd all be full. But there's something that the people out there don't want. Or they see something, or there's something that's not not drawing them, you know, to be a part of the kingdom of God. And I'm not even just saying this church. I'm saying it's all over the place right now. It's in America. And uh, I think we got too many sacred cows we're holding on to. Our buildings, our stuff, our identity here on earth. We got, we got too much in the way. And they're sacred cows. They're things that, that I ain't about to change. I've done this for 40 years. My grandma built this building and I'm not moving. Yeah, you just worship that dude. You go right ahead. All the way down the drain. Because that's where you're headed. It, it's so hard to spot those things. You have the Holy Spirit to deal with your pride. I've, I've had him... The last week or so, he's brought things up to me, and I thought, man, God, it's everywhere. And, and I would do things or say things, or, and I think, oh, I, I don't want to face judgment with this. Another thing they said last night on watching that video, when these people die and go to heaven, when they get before Jesus, immediately they start judging themselves. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. I missed it. Oh, Lord, I was so full of pride. Oh, Lord, I wasn't listening to you. I didn't pay attention. I didn't give you an hour a day to try to talk to me. I was busy. I was always on finding something else to do besides what he wanted. And, and it's like I have a Holy Spirit. I walk by this Bible six times a day and I don't pick it up. I'll look at it and I think, man, I need to read that some more today. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. But it's like, are we willing to start moving us over so that God can get in the center? Are we willing to quit trying to prove that we're somebody here on earth and let Him prove who we really are? Guys, we're different. We're royalty. The King has drawn us out. He has formed us as an ecclesia, the called out ones. And He's wanting something from us. He's wanting us to come to a place. I've seen times I just pick up the phone and call somebody and I won't do it. I'll do that right after this YouTube, Lord. Doesn't happen. Little things, they don't have to be big. With God, little things are big. Will I do it? Will I go down and check on the lady down the hall that's not feeling good? Will I... Will I Will I pick up the phone and pray for my mama when she's so fearful of having to move at 90 years old? Minister to her. I've, I've prayed for her till I'm blue in the face this week. But you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to call mama. I've got to check on her because this is rocking her world. 
It's turning everything she's ever, ever had upside down. And so it's like, I want to be Jesus to people. I don't want to do it because I think it's a good idea. I want to do it because I've heard the Holy Spirit that says, Shane, put your fork down. And you know what usually happens if you put your fork down? The next meal's even better. You may eat a hamburger, but if you don't eat the whole thing and shut up when you're supposed to, he'll give you a steak later. <laughs> he don't care. He's God. But we have to come to this place. We've got to locate it in us. And I'm not here to point fingers. Man, my hands are straight up saying, forgive me, Lord. But I can tell you right now that I can't keep going like this. I've got to get humble. I got to get to a place where I want God's best and biggest. Jesus learned obedience by the things he suffered. I don't like to suffer. That hurts my pride. I got it all together. Man, I'm quoting the word. I'm not going to have. You better be telling the truth, is all I know. When you put others down, you're really just trying to exalt yourself. And we don't need exalting because of whose we are. We are exalted. It's already bought and paid for. It's, it's in the blood. It's Jesus. We need to get that in our knower. He's already done it. I don't have to exalt myself. I just have to have one word on my mind. It's two words. Yes, sir. I'll do it, Lord. Pride is a sin in my heart. It's not my goofy head. It's one that I've had in a seed in my heart ever since I was born. And it, it's cost me dearly. I can look back over the years in businesses and different things and, you know, it was always my way or the highway and let's hurry up and get it done. And then the boss would come around and I was so proud. And they were laying there on the floor just beat like little puppies. Oh, but we got her done. And I took all the glory. Too many things in life I see those things. No matter what you believe, if it doesn't line up with God's Word, you're wrong. I guarantee you. Don't be stubborn and afraid of God's new wine. Most of us, change is tough. It really is. It just, it's hard. Your greatest sign of pride in your life comes out on your tongue. Everybody here knows some toxic people. And toxic people are the ones that, that have absolutely no uh, consideration for others. It's all about them. Toxic. And you don't have to put up with that. Protect the Jesus in you. Toxic people are not... You just pray for them, love them, and go on. But don't pick up their stink. Don't do it. Have you truly surrendered your will to God? Have you surrendered your, your, yourself to God? Oh, we all want fire insurance. We want to be saved. I, don't, I, I want to go to heaven, but I want to tear the devil up while I'm here. I want, I want to rip him every chance. He, he will quit going by my house. But if I don't get this pride out of my life, he just whispers and I'm sunk over and over and over. And it's like one of those things where we've all got to take a, a checkup. Do a checkup and see where we are. Uh, we might be pushing it. Are things not going so well? Could you maybe be out of the line? Could you maybe be off the mark? Hang on just a second. I'm going to... Jeff, we weren't pulling a trick on you. I just wanted to show that he hears God, and I hear God. And I finished with what I want to say. Now I want to hear his. Well, I, of me, have nothing. But 
when I ask the Lord what he wants to say, I try to write it down. i got to get my glasses on. I can't see. That comes with gray hair. <laughs> you got a couple. We are to put into use what has already been given to us and expect God to bless it. Because that's what his word tells us. Ask, expect, and receive. Then give all thanks and praise to God. What we have received, we are to impart to those in need. And bless God and thank Jesus. Jesus showed us it can be done and how to do it. We have been given all power and authority to the glory of God. The more you use it, the more God will give you. I thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you. The more you use it, the more you'll get. I don't, I don't find fault with anybody. I find fault with me. I want to find out where God wants me in my spirit, man, and in my walk with him, and I want to be there. Just like Jesus was always with the Father. He stayed in tune. And, and there's so many things, folks, I think that could really be over overdone or over could be removed if pride wasn't in my way. I know it, and, and I, you, any one of y'all can come ask me a question, and I'm so smart, I know all the answers. Now I'm learning. I can't fill a thimble with what I know, and I'm good with that because it helps me to stay humble. It helps me to stay soft. It helps me to care about people that nobody cares about. It helps me to love a little mama that just drives me up the wall, but I am so blessed to have her because my pride's always been trying to tell mama how to do it. And God finally told me, won't you shut up and just help her do it? There's a trick in that. It humbles me. Lord, I've been, I helped her for 65 years. Well, just a few more and you'll be through. I love my mom. Moms are a heritage. God listens to mother's prayers before anybody else's. I know he, he does. But I also know that what's kicking a lot of my family's pride, uh, tail is pride. And I want to release that off of us. So y'all stand up and let me, let me pray. <laughs>